You're watching Tag TV. Hello and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that exposes Pakistan's role and nexus in promoting global terrorism and its funding. Here are the headlines. Indian Foreign Minister lambasts Pakistan for supporting terrorism. Former ISI Chief Asad Durrani's book confirms Pakistan's involvement in terror activities. U.S. Congressman lambasts Pakistan for sheltering terrorists. LED terrorist confession nails Pakistan's link to terrorism. Pakistan-backed terrorists targeted Afghan Interior Ministry. Pakistan has long been using terrorism as a tool to create instability and fear in India. It has spoiled the political, social and cultural relations between the two nations. Recently, India's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj reiterated that there cannot be any comprehensive dialogue with Pakistan as talks and terror cannot go together. Newsweek South Asia has a report. India's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj took a firm stand against Pakistan when she refused to have a comprehensive dialogue with Pakistan till it shuns out terrorism. Her statement comes in the wake of ceasefire violations by Pakistani rangers at LOC in Jammu and Kashmir, which led several innocent villagers dead and injured. The minister ensured that the engagements such as two-track diplomacy and the NSA-level meetings will keep taking place. Swaraj explained that they are ready for talks with Pakistan, but guns and diplomacy cannot go hand in hand. So, I will tell you, we are ready for talks. We have never been, we were never in a position when we said that we are not ready for talks. But there is a caveat. Terror and talks cannot go together. This is our position. And in this position, we have no change in any position. हम बातचीत के लिए तैयार हैं चुनाव से पहले भी चुनाव का इससे कोई लेना देना नहीं है हम चुनाव से पहले भी बातचीत को तैयार हैं बशर्ते पाकिस्तान आतंकवाद छोड़कर बातचीत की मेज पर आने को तैयार हो the government of India has time and again initiated peace talks with Pakistan, but after the terror attacks in Pathan Kot, Uri and the recent incidents in Aris Pura sector, the tensions have been high between the countries. Swaraj explained that with Indian soldiers and civilians dying on the border, the situation didn't seem right for peace talks. I am not saying this today. I was saying this in the same way. I was saying this in the same way. When Naraj Sahib had four formulas, I said that there are no need for four formulas. You keep one formula. Leave the attack and talk. So the first thing is that there is no connection between the two. The second thing is that there is no connection between the two. The second thing is that Nirmala Ji has talked about it. चाहे किसी और ने बात की हो ये केवियट कभी नहीं हटा टेरर एंड टॉक्स के नॉट गो टुगेदर क्यों जब सीमा पर जनाजे उठ रहे हो तो बातचीत की आवाज अच्छी नहीं लगती पाकिस्तान हैज बीन कॉजिंग मे हिम इन द कश्मीर वैली बाय स्नीकिंग इन टेररिस्ट एंड ब्रेन वॉशिंग द माइंड्स ऑफ यंग कश्मीरीज बाय एनकरेजिंग देम टू बिल स्टोन्स ऑन द इंडियन सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस बॉर्डर हॉट हो हर रोज सीमा पर गोलाबारी हो सीमा से घुसपैठ करके आतंकवादी भेजे जाएं, पठानकोट में एयरबेस पर हमला हो इन तमाम बातों के चलते बातचीत नहीं हो सकती जहां तक कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव बायोलेटल डायलॉग का सवाल है मैं ही गई थी इस्लामाबाद हार्ट ऑफ एशिया के सम्मेलन में और कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव बायोलेटल डायलॉग शुरू करके आई थी लेकिन उसके चंद दिन के बाद पठानकोट एयरबेस पर हमला हुआ था एक्सपर्ट्स स्वराज एंड गवर्नमेंट स्टैंड ऑन पाकिस्तान it's a old India's policy, you know. Um, Prime Minister Modi has been telling, you know, he wanted to have very good ties with Pakistan. He himself went to the Lahore and met several times Nawaz Sharif in different uh, places. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, Pakistani military establishment did not allow him to continue uh, or dialogue with India. Uh, and um, the demand then made, you know, okay, that terror and talk cannot go side by side. If Pakistan is interested in talks with India, he has to stop terror, which means he ha they have to also stop shelling on the border or violation of the ceasefire agreement. They have to accept that also. 
um, uh, only then serious dialogue can take place. India is prepared for a negotiated settlement with Pakistan based on Shimla Accord or Lahore Agreement, you know. We have two agreements in which uh, and Pakistan is signatory to both in which it was decided that uh, we'll sort out differences through negotiation bilaterally. Pakistan provides training and arms to Lashkar-e-Toyba, Hijbul Mujahideen and other terror outfits to carry out strike in India. In 2008, 10 members of Lashkar-e-Toyba, a terror group based in Pakistan, carried out a series of 12 coordinated shooting and bombing attacks across Mumbai. 166 people died and 308 were wounded in the attacks, which drew widespread global condemnation. In January 2016, Pakistan-backed terrorists carried out attack at Pathan Kot Air Force Station, killing one civilian and seven security personnel. Moving on, Pakistan always remains in denial when someone raises questions over its sponsorship of terrorism. In a latest book co-authored by former Pakistani intelligence chief Asad Durrani with the former chief of India's intelligence arm, the research and analysis wing A.S. Dulat, it was exposed that Pakistan sheltered Osama bin Laden and fomented unrest in Jammu and Kashmir. We have a report. On May 2, 2011, the leader of Al-Qaeda and the architect of 9-11 terrorist attacks, Osama bin Laden, was traced and killed by U.S. forces in Ebotabad city of Pakistan. Ebotabad, which lies north of the capital Islamabad, is home to three army regiments and the Kakul Military Academy and Army Officer Training Center. The U.S. raid that killed Osama bin Laden is the tarnished issue in the Spy Chronicles, written by former Chief of Pakistan's Inter Services Intelligence ISI Asad Durrani and A.S. Dulat, and ex-Chief of Indian Intelligence Research and Analysis Wing R.A.W. Bro. The ISI probably learned about OPL Osama bin Laden and he was handed over to the United States according to a mutually agreed process. Assad Durrani wrote in Spy Chronicles. This contradicts Pakistan's official stance that it only knew of the U.S. raid on May 2, 2011, which targeted the compound where Bin Laden was holed up after the U.S. steel helicopters had left its territory. The Pakistan Army part retired Lieutenant General Durrani, who served as the ISI chief in the early 90s, from leaving the country, saying he had violated the military code of conduct. I don't know how Pakistan thinks and uh, what the problem is because he has said nothing new. Whether it is Osama, whether it is Kargil, his views are well known and he has been critical. On Osama, he said what he said. Other sensitive topics brought in the book include a Pakistani spy agency's interference in politics and Islamabad's support for groups fighting Indian forces in Jammu and Kashmir. Officially, Pakistan has always maintained that it supports the population in Kashmir morally and diplomatically and denies any role in the armed anti-India insurgency in Jammu and Kashmir. Well, yes, in the book, uh, uh, Mr. Dulat suggests this, that uh, Pakistan had a major hand in uh, fomenting insurgency in Kashmir. This is in context of how they build up, where uh, the, the General Durrani supplements it by talking about uh, 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 Amanullah Gilgiti, actually Amanullah Khan, who started it and now Pakistan promoted Amanullah Khan to start uh, terrorism in Kashmir under the banner of JKLF and how they they then ditched Amanullah Khan and created Hezbollah Mujahideen. That is basically the conversation so that Amanullah Khan was not acceptable to Pakistan and especially ISI because he was talking about uh, independent Kashmir. So they wanted Amanullah Khan to be replaced with Hezbollah Mujahideen which would talk about annexation of Kashmir into Pakistan. So that is an interplay of Pakistani politics which has been brought out in this book, in this conversation rather between uh, Dulat and General Durrani. 
India, however, has directly accused Pakistani intelligence of long supporting militancy in Kashmir and the attack by Lashkar e Doiba militants that killed more than 160 people in Mumbai in 2008. In the book, Durrani said the cause of prosecuting Mumbai terror attacks mastermind and ban Chamat Udawa JUT head Hafiz Said is to great. He agreed that house arrest of Hafiz Said was choreographed. I mean, uh, that obviously, uh, the, the fact that uh, the Pakistani establishment, uh, the deep state as it, it's being called, uh, is not interested in taking action against Hafiz Said, uh, and the arrest was more or less a sham. Uh, that also comes out in the book, and that's the reason why why General Durrani is being questioned uh, in Pakistan and his permit to leave Pakistan has been taken away. But that th this is not just the book has been portrayed in the Indian media. Uh, General Durrani also faces a court case uh, called Habib Mehram case under which uh, the, the Supreme Court of Pakistan has started hearing charges against uh, Durrani. So it's a mixture of both. The protection he expected, that is Jal Durrani from the army, from this court case, has disappeared because of this book being published. Earlier, in a bold and forthright manner, former Pakistani Prime Minister Nawab Sharif categorically confirmed that the 2611 terrorists were all Pakistanis and described them as a non-state actors. Pakistan in particular and the world in general was taken apart by such a surprising yet ambiguous admission. Moving on, Pakistan gets billions of dollars every year as foreign aid to fight terrorism. But its failure to act against terror groups operating from its soil has been widely criticized by the United States and other Western countries. Recently at an event in Washington, D.C., U.S. Congressman lambasted on Pakistan for supporting terrorism and carrying out human rights violations against its own citizens. We have a report. World's deadliest terror outfits are operating from Pakistani soil. Be it Haqqani Network, lashkar e toiba or the Taliban, they have patronage over Pakistan's inter-service intelligence. From providing training to sophisticated arms, these terrorists have open access to Pakistan Army's resources. Though known as the factory of terrorism, Pakistan has been seeking international sympathy on global platforms, calling itself a victim of terror and taking large amounts of money from developed countries like the United States and other European unions. It uses the same money to embolden its cold-blooded generals and brutal ISI officials to further suppress the people of the region. At an event in Washington, D.C., U.S. congressman opposes any financing to Pakistan to fight against terrorism. I voted against funding for Pakistan because I thought they are not acting the way that we would in America. Number one, and you don't take American money and oppress your people with our money. That's not what we stand for. Thomas Garrett Jr., a United States congressman who has been critical of the government of Pakistan for exercising high-handedness, reiterates his position on severe human rights violations. If you look at the Constitution and you compare it to how the actual government is functioning, if you look at where the reins of power are, if you look at uh, some, some abilities of the ISI in particular to affect uh, what, what some might call control, I think that's beyond what was contemplated. Um, so I, what I want to be clear about is, again, there's no single community of human beings in Pakistan who I'm being critical of. It is the leadership of a nation that denies individuals the rights that they are entitled to, not again by a constitution or by law, but by nature. Pakistan has been using these terrorists as proxies against India and Afghanistan. There are several terror camps operating in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan. However, Pakistan keeps denying basic human rights to the indigenous people in these occupied regions of the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. 
the only thing that matters to Islamabad from this region is money and natural resources. It imposes severe taxation laws in order to raise the amount of exchequer and exploits resources to meet its energy needs. Rest is just an infertile piece of land which is extensively used by the Inter-Service Intelligence ISI, to engineer and carry out its drills of terror activities against India. There's hundreds and hundreds of people on the street demanding self-rule and end to Pakistan's colonial rule in Gilgit Baltistan and end to China's encroachment on our land and resources. And because of Pakistan's um, um, relationship with uh, the militant organizations and its uh, illegal involvement in Afghanistan, uh, Gilgit Baltistan became the hotbed for militancy during the Afghan Jihad and it's been going on and continued like that since then and unfortunately that has as a consequence resulted in massacre of the local people there. Pakistan stands on the cusp of being declared a pariah state after it was put in the grey list by the Financial Action Task Force FATF for its active involvement in the funding of terror activities. There is a growing anger amongst the people and the demand an immediate action against the nurturing factory of terrorism. Moving on, Pakistan is a terror factory and it nurtures dreaded terrorists to carry out attacks in India, Afghanistan and many Western countries. This has been proved through a confession by a lashkar e toiba terrorist, Zaibullah Alias Hamza. A resident of Multan in Pakistan's Punjab province, he received training in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and was caught in Kashmir Valley by Indian security forces. Today we are showing this exclusive interview with this hardcore terrorist from Pakistan. हमारी ट्रेनिंग दौरा एक खास की मुजफ्फराबाद में हुई और वो दक्कन में हुई उसी दौरान जकी और मान लखवी आए और उन्होंने हम सब को इकट्ठा किया मैदान में और पूछा कि भाई कोई किसी का कोई सवाल हो तो सारे तो एक दूसरे की तरफ देखते रहे किसी ने सवाल नहीं किया उसके बाद उन्होंने कहा कि ठीक है मैं आपको नसीहत करता हूं उन्होंने हमें नसीहत की कि आपकी ट्रेनिंग है सख्त है इसमें किसी ने भागना नहीं और इस तकामत से डटे रहना और इंशाल्लाह इसके बाद हम कश्मीर में जिहाद करेंगे इसके बाद वो चले गए और उसके बाद फरवरी और मार्च 2017 हमारा दौरा अंबोर मेरा दौरा खास उधर हाफिज सईद आए और वो लश्कर वालों से मिले और उसके बाद वो चले गए और हम भी उनसे मिले हमने जिधर भी इनसे رابطہ किया और अपनी जगह की इनको लोकेशन बताते कि हम इस जगह पहुंच गए तो ये ये हमें यही नसीहत करते कि आप बर्फ में हो अगर ज्यादा देर रहे तो आपके लिए नुकसान हो सकता है जितनी जल्दी आप बर्फ से निकलोगे आपके लिए आसानी है और ध्यान से चलो सफर एक दूर देख के करो आराम से करो ज्यादा जल्दी भी नहीं करनी आर्मी ने आपको देख लिया तो मुश्किल हो जाएगी जो आपकी आखिरी टाप है थोड़ा सा सफर रह गया आपका आप उधर पहुंचो जल्दी से यहां से निकलो जंगल में से और कपवाड़ा शहर में पहुंचो और आगे लोला पहुंचो और जो मेरा कोर्ट था लश्कर की तरफ से वो जोलो 2 था ये केएफसी कैंप है मुजफ्फराबाद में केएफसी लश्कर का और इसमें लश्कर की फिदाइन ट्रेनिंग भी होती है हाफिज अब्दुल राऊ साहब एफ आई एफ फला इंसानियत फाउंडेशन के चेयरमैन है ये तो एक मर्तबा हमारे दो दनियाल सेक्टर पे जब 2017 में मैं बॉर्डर पे था उस टाइम हमारे सेक्टर दो दनियाल पे आए उधर हम सब से मिले और काफी बहुत खुश हुए उधर इन्होंने एक एक सब को इकट्ठा किया मस्जिद के अंदर और वहां से सब सब एक को पूछा खड़ा करके कि भाई आप कहां के हो और उनके करीब के उनको जगह बताई कि मैं वहां भी गया हूं मैं वहां भी गया हूं एफ आई एफ के चेयरमैन तो सबसे खुश हुए और ये भी बोला कि जब हम आप जैसे लोगों से मिलते हैं तो जो हमारे दिल का जो ईमान है वो दोबारा ताजा होता है और बहुत इन्होंने खुशी की उधर इंडियन सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस हैव कॉट मेनी सच टेररिस्ट हु हैव रिसीव्ड ट्रेनिंग इन पाकिस्तान Moving on, violence continues unabated in Afghanistan as a car bomb exploded near the Interior Ministry in Kabul city. The blast was followed by a gun battle between the security forces and the terrorists. This is another of the series of attacks that have rocked the war-ravaged country in the past few months. Newsweek South Asia takes a look. Terrorists launched coordinated attacks at two places in capital Kabul, killing a police chief and two of his officers in the rural province and pinning down hundreds of government employees in a ministry building in Afghanistan. The suspected Taliban terrorists who attacked the Afghan Interior Ministry were wearing old US Army Universal Camouflage Pattern uniforms and driving a captured Humvee 
a tactic that the enemy used in the past. The Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for suicide bombing, but the U.S. Army predicts hand of the Taliban and the Haqqani network. The Taliban and a local Islamic State affiliate have carried out waves of attacks, mainly targeting security forces and the country's Shiite minority that have killed hundreds of people. Both groups have expanded their footprint in the countryside. On several occasions, Afghanistan has accused Pakistan of sheltering terrorists who carry out major attacks. However, Pakistan denies these allegations of sending militants to Afghanistan. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at a9.com. This is Chandra Kala signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.